I'm Catherine Ross, and I'm here from um, NYAC live with Jim Kramer. Jim, what's on the top of your mind this morning? Well, geez, I mean, it's not Goldilocks. It's just goody lots. Y you have a number that is much better than people thought. Slight wage gains, which, by the way, are not bad. We want the workers to make more money. Maybe I'm an old-fashioned LBJ Democrat, but I thought that was good. Um, we have uh, fewer people discouraged, but we still have lots of people that we can put to work. We've got incredible numbers for uh, minorities. It's fantastic. Finally getting the, the country starting to produce enough jobs for everybody, which is great. And I'm coming at it like this. Catherine, hate them or like them, good damn number. Good number. We were looking for a number around 180,000 jobs to be added in November. We got a number of 266,000. Jim, why was this such a blowout number? Well, I think that when you look at the makeup of it, it shows you that we are a consumer-led economy and the consumer spending, consumer's wealthy, consumer's buying houses, consumer shopping, uh, it, it, just not at the mall. Um, the uh, manufacturing number was much, I, I, you know, that's a lot of that maybe GM coming back, but I thought that was shocking uh, because obviously the tariffs should have indicated that we weren't. And then the other thing that's amazing is the oil patch, which used to be the oil patch in all of Louisiana and Texas, not really doing it anymore. So this is just a nice national pastiche of service. Uh, and if, Larry Kudlow interviewed him, and uh, he said, look, if we get a China deal, get another half percent GDP. If we get a uh, mexico Canada deal, get another half percent GDP. And I'm with him. I mean, I've worked with Larry for a long time, and he is a very, very strong economist. People don't realize just exactly how right he was. Now, they keep pointing out to some statement he gave in 2008 about good. You know, he's an optimist. But he, he, he adjusted that, and it's unfair. We all, we've all been making mistakes. There. I've made mistakes, of course. But, you know, in the end, Larry's talking about a, a growth without inflation scenario. Uh, no more Phillips curve. And that means you can even lower rates if you want to. I don't think they need to right now because this is such a good number. But um, it, it's taking up everything. Now, I want to I want to be careful about one thing. Some of the stocks that are going up, this is your chance. I mean, 3M's not doing as well as the stock up six. Maybe you reposition. Um, I don't think you chase the drug stocks. This is not a total drug stocks, right? But you have everything up, and that's just because it's a giant futures program. I'm going to say this to you right now, and listen to me, my, my moron shadowhead critics. I do not like buy programs. I don't. I like sell programs because they create discounts that I can use. Buy programs are bad and wrong, and this is a buy program for everything. So those who think, oh, he likes it when it's bullish, he doesn't, you guys are fools, and you went to the Navin Johnson School of Business. Jim, was this jobs number the, what we needed to distract ourselves from the trade headlines that we've seen earlier this week? No, I mean, we could, you know, I, I'm of the opinion we, that we should walk away. I know Larry was saying the talks are intense, getting there. I don't think there's any reason to talk. Last night, the poll bureau, can you imagine we're still talking about them? The poll bureau said that they're going to, uh, don't worry about systemic financial risk. That's what they said over there. That sounds like 2008, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's time to walk away. I know I'm much harder line now than Peter Navarro. Uh, I'm trying to get him where I am. I mean, you know, why do we have talks? I mean, look what these numbers are. It's time to walk away and then tell the Chinese, listen, you do something really good, a real buy, you, you, you put jobs here, and we'll talk. But otherwise, December 15, the numbers go up. All of the retailers I was dealing with this morning, I haven't had a chance to write real money. It is amazing how the retailers are pulling from 50 to 40 to 30 business in China. And you know, if this keeps going, they'll be 20 and 10. If anything, we should be stop paying, uh, the World Bank should stop giving money to China. And the, what the World Bank should be doing, just so people understand this, we give money to the World Bank and they put it to China, is give it to these other countries so that they can build up infrastructure so that we can ship uh, Haiphong Harbor, have as many, uh, uh, have as many cargo uh, uh, boats as we need. Uh, this is a remarkable number and it says that we don't need the Chinese. We just don't need them. I know oh. nobody has that position. I don't even think the president has that position. This Over. is a much more bullish number than even the president understands. Remember, I hate him or like him. I mean, I, I've been around, I, I remember 50 years ago. That was a guns and butter uh, increase in inflation uh, and, and followed by a recession. And, and this is not that. Now, over on Real Money, in your latest column, you wrote about the Financial Times poll that found that two-thirds of Americans are not invested in the stock market. Yeah, I asked Larry about that, and Larry said, well, you know, that's the way the news is. But Michael Semblist, uh, the remarkable market strategist at J.P. Morgan, put out a very good piece this weekend, his eye of the market, talking about how the cable news networks just simply refuse to talk about positive news, uh, economic news. It's the 16th most important story in, in what he measured. He measured himself 16. Can you imagine, and this is the most positive economic news I've come. Now, I want to go back again. Um, I was, a, 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 and anyone who knows me for my life knows I was an old-fashioned LBJ liberal, meaning expand the pie. 
Uh, the big issue there had always been that to be inflation. That was always what we were taught. That's what Otto Eckstein taught me. That's what John Kenneth Galbraith taught me at Harvard. It turned out that we expanded the pie and the inflation didn't occur. So uh, it wasn't guns and butter this time. And that, by the way, just so you understand, that was a Democrat view that I just articulated. This is Democrats, okay? John Kenneth Galbraith, he was speaking Democrat. And I'm saying that this is a John Kenneth Galbraith number. So I, I, that's why I say hate or like Trump. This is the number that the Democrats always said could not occur. Uh, and they have to rethink, the, well, they're not alive anymore, but they all said it couldn't occur, and it's occurring. That's who I study with. I mean, I, st I took so many of those economics classes. I took a lot of courses on communism, too. There, they're supposed to be doing much better. Isn't it funny? We still hear that the communists are doing much better in China. Give me a break. The Politburo last night comes out and says, don't worry about systemic risk. Is that an economy that's strong? Is that what you know? How about if, if Farfed had to say that? Jim, let's Healthcare circle back stocks, for a moment. Healthcare stocks coming in here. Let's circle back for a moment. Based on that poll and your Real Money article, you know, we've got a president that is constantly championing the Dow in his tweets, well, yeah, but should he, he be championing trying to get you know, more he be Americans American investing? Industry. He should be championing individual companies, but I know he's got us to do the 30,000 feed. Um, and I know that uh, at times he, he, he's at odds with some companies. I don't mind, I, I don't mind. I, look, I, let me back up. I think it's great that he references, but I think that what you really need is higher contribution levels to IRAs because people do individual stocks. If you wanted to do, and that's my plan, by the way, and I'm going to uh, unveil that plan in the next couple of weeks for my 2020, we have our talk uh, for Action Alerts. I want IRA rates up. I want you to be able to put more money away because then people will buy individual stocks uh, because a lot of your 401k, like I looked at my 401k plan, it's got all these stupid funds that I got to be in. I, I, you know, I can't own individual stocks, so I get that. But you know, I don't want to own these. I mean, you know, people should own pieces of America like they do at Robinhood with 10 million accounts. 10 million accounts, and those guys are democratizing the way that E-Trade once did. So I, I think that if we raised the roof, if we raised the roof beam carpenters on the IRAs, then we would really get the participation that I want. That's what we should do, concrete. All right, Jim, I want to head over to our real or to our Action Alerts Plus Daily Rundown show because I want to get your exclusive insight into your um, interview with Kudlow that you just got oh, off set sure. for. Thank so you. thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, as I just said, head on over to ActionAlertsPlus.com to watch our exclusive interview there. I'm Catherine Ross, and I'll see you tomorrow.